let's just be real. This probably isn't the place we thought Liverpool were going to make the signing this summer. There was probably some rumours around Liverpool getting a guy in the front line, but Federico Chiesa, who is in his last year of his contract at Juve, apparently is surplus to demands in the Italian club, who are now changing a style and therefore also changing some of their players, but also with the fact that they don't want him to re-sign a new contract and the player obviously wants some minutes because he is an experienced player at international level, but also an experienced player at club level. This could be one of those Liverpool signings. But when I say one of those Liverpool signings, which kind do I mean? Well, let's unpack that in this video. Would you go for Federico Chiesa? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know where you think he fits into the team and let me know what you think of, obviously, my thoughts. Obviously, Federico Chiesa is a mouth-watering prospect to any big football club. I think he's got relatively good value at around 30 to 35 million euros. He scores a goal roughly every one in five and assists probably every one in three to four games. That's probably because most of the time he's floating all over the field, playing a lot in the build-up, very good at traveling with the ball, very good at shielding the ball, but also very good at carrying it downfield away on the counter-attack style. Say, similar to the way that you saw Liverpool score against, well, both Ipswich and also Brentford on the weekend, but specifically Brentford. And not only that, but Having an experienced international, I mean, Liverpool have got a lot of these kind of captain level players, people with a lot of personality. And it's fair to say that in recent years, he's kind of actually struggled in a lot of aspects of his life. He was injured for a very long period, which saw him miss half a season at the end of a season and miss half a season at the beginning of a season, and then kind of struggled to come back to form, possibly struggled to break his way back into the team, struggled to refind some of that old that you would want a player to have. And of course, it's always hard to do that after you've done a cruciate injury. It, it's horrific. But at the same time, at a club like Juve, where, let's be honest, some of their medical is a little bit patchy, you're either kind of on it or not. And sometimes they move on from players. Sometimes they're just like, you know what? We're sort of done with this guy. Now, there are a few amazing things about him. I think he would fit into anywhere in Liverpool's front line, not only as a striker or as a right winger or as a left winger, but also as a 10. I don't think he goes deep as an eight or a six. I certainly think he can pick the deep ball up a little bit deeper. I think his combination play with other players would be fantastic. I think at times you worry that maybe football has moved a little bit beyond his style of play or the Juve style of play, but it seems to be coming back now. A lot more managers looking for variation in their wingers, and Chiesa is definitely that. Though there are a lot of crossovers with Salah, there are a lot of crossovers with possibly the likes of Luis Diaz on that other side. It's kind of hard to work out where his best position is now. Personally, I think it's kind of on the inside left, but there is also a shout for it being on the right. There is also a shout for him kind of just being put as like a weird lone strike through the middle, maybe kind of Jota style in there. But there's also a shout for needing a Mo Salah backup right now. Currently, it looks as if it's going to be Harvey Elliott. At the weekend, I was watching when Harvey Elliott came on. Slightly different style of play. You could argue that Brentford were maybe... Maybe Liverpool were looking to kind of pick off little passes against Brentford at that point, so it wasn't this kind of counter-attacking football. Maybe Bradley's the ball carrier that we were looking Mo Salah to be, and Harvey is the kind of guy that then picks it up from there and delivers a beautiful ball into the box or does something a little bit creative in a different way to Salah. It's always good to have that level of variation. Obviously, the great uh, Enzo Maresca recently made a comment, I love variation in my wingers. And you've got to admit, like... I get that, you know, we'll obviously have first team choices, but let's face it, if we signed Chiesa now, we're not talking about Chiesa five years ago when he's just coming into, you know, being Federico Chiesa or three years ago when he's entering that peak and everyone's talking about Manchester United, Chelsea, all these kind of people. We're talking about after a dip in a player's career where, frankly, it's been difficult for him. And he isn't going to be coming in expecting first-team football. Now, maybe he wants to go somewhere where he consistently starts every week, at which point, nicks the Liverpool project. You're not going there. And this could also be one of those rumours that is obviously just complete rubbish, where the Italians are, of course, just trying to push through a transfer from Juve to somewhere else. Very often, Liverpool uses that proxy because, first of all, the, the people who are going to buy from the Italian club go, hmm, well, if Liverpool are looking, he must be good. But they also go, well, Liverpool move fairly quickly. If we don't move quickly, and blah, blah, blah. So I just want to... Slightly caveat with that. The first thought that came into my head was, in recent years, we haven't really had a Divock Origi come Gerdan Chachire type player. Some of you will say Shakiri, my wife's Kosovan, I will say Chachire. The point is, 
he was an experienced player from a big institution who bought a lot of personality, who bought a scary name with him, and was often someone who was either overestimated or underestimated. He had a mission, which was not only at Liverpool, but also on the international stage with Switzerland, similar to Chiesa wanting to break back into this Italy side more consistently. And he was also the kind of player who could snatch goals, who could do special things, who seemed and feels like the kind of guy that you would want in your team. A big name who makes sense in Moneyball style football and can seemingly combine with other players in the team, seemingly played at the very top level and has played very well in those areas. Obviously, he's also played in the Champions League. Obviously, he also played in the Euros. Obviously, he's trying to get his fitness back up. I think it's been very patchy. If you look, I was looking on SofaScore, it's like a couple of weeks injury, a couple of weeks missed a game, a couple of weeks. That, that will, of course, be frustrating. And of course, we don't want uh, Thiago, Artemelo, Mario Balotelli. Uh, I mean, I actually thought Aquilani was all right, but we're thinking kind of players we've signed from Italy before. Italian players historically, maybe we're looking at... Who was the, who was the left back? Or the, yeah, who was the left back who scored against Manchester United in the 4-1? Donna... It wasn't Donna Roma. Anyway, it was he even Italian. The point is... I don't need someone who's relatively always injured. We need someone who's going to come in, come into Liverpool's fitness regime, thrive within that fitness regime, be a good trainer with those guys, offer some challenge to Salah in some capacity, possibly also offer that if he's on the field, then maybe Salah can move inside to a 10-type position or Salah can move inside to a striker-type position. Someone who can rotate, as we saw on the weekend with Luis Diaz and Jota going in and out, in and out. Salah relatively maintained a lot of his position. But at the same time, I think it's worth saying this. At the moment, the backup to Salah is, realistically, Harvey Elliott, and at a push, Soboslai. Soboslai seems too key as a runner to that midfield at the moment. I know that a lot of people are criticising his midfield. We'll talk about that another time. But the point is, Harvey Elliott is a fantastic player, but he's very different to Salah. He doesn't possess the pace, the size, and the strength that Mo Salah does. He possesses elements of those things, but not in the same package, and therefore we can't deploy him in the same way. That's fair enough. I'm not criticising him. I also think that Harvey Elliott looked pretty good. And when I say pretty good, that's an understatement. In that like 10 type position preseason, and is arguably a good player, but different in such a way. Chiesa seems much more direct, much more aggressive, much more, hey, I'm gonna get inside and shoot from this position. You can serve me a ball like a long ball, I'll run onto it, I'll control it, and then I'll bring it into the box. If you're gonna take Mo Salah off and you wanna manage his minutes this season, Chiesa is a Champions League level player, potentially, because he may be injured a lot of the time, who can come in and not only understudy, but be a name. He's someone who Liverpool fans would excitedly buy shirts of. He's someone who would be not only squad filler, but actual useful experience within the team. Not only that, but I do think that after the weekend, I did look at it and think, mm, maybe I prefer Elliot at the 10, maybe I wouldn't prefer him out on the right. Or maybe I prefer that like floating, pushing eight position where I particularly like him. Maybe he doesn't want to play there. I'd actually love Noah Harvey Elliott wants to play. I think he's a fantastic player. I'd love to see at Liverpool for years. But of course, I have my preferences as to what I like in formation. But what it made me think was, actually, the worry is not so much, oh, Elliott, where he is in the team. It's when we don't have a 10 in Soboslai, say that Gravenberch needs rotating. Say that Endo needs a runner alongside him. Say that McAllister or someone just isn't in a game. Subaslam might have to drop back and play more of that double pivot style role. Maybe someone else will come in and Subaslam will still keep his position. But that would probably mean an opening for Harvey Elliott, and therefore we don't have backup for Salah, and therefore there's like a knock-on effect. Now, I get it. This is not, and I repeat, not signing a DM. This is not signing a centre-back. I think both those players are still signings we probably need. We probably could get, I'm not saying we will, but could get a centre-back or a left-sided defensive player, and a C and, and DM, or someone who's a more defensively-minded central midfielder. Will we? Most probably not. But will we see value in the market with one year left on his contract, with Mo Salah seemingly potentially leaving at the end of this season? Next season? Anyway, the point is, if you then bring in someone like Federico Chiesa, not only do you have a guy on a contract who, hey, if it doesn't work out, probably get another 30 to 35 million for him if he goes back to a big club. Hey, Barcelona, how you doing? You might need a guy. There's plenty of value in the market for someone like Chiesa, but weirdly, it seemingly needs someone to take a bit of a chance on him. 
Liverpool are not an island of misfit toys anymore, but they're certainly the kind of guys that see value in that market. Does he count as that? For me, he's a Shachire type, he's an Origi type, he's someone who's probably at this point in his career very willing to back someone up, and I think at the moment he's 26, he'll probably be 27 very soon, and with that, I think he's looking to just be playing football, entering what you would call his peak, but arguably after a massive, debilitating and difficult to recover from injury. Guess who's really good at recovering players from those injuries, rebuilding them, bringing them back up? Very often, Liverpool a la Joe Gomez. I know Thiago doesn't count. We've had a couple of these in recent years. Some have hit, some haven't. Thiago hit temporarily, didn't hit later. So I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. I think this is a great signing. He's the kind of guy that I'd love to see in the squad, but if it means that the sacrifices of a DM of a C, a C, B, then no. But I don't think this is, would be in sacrifice of that. And if we cannot get Anthony Gordon in the coming days, if, and if this is a smoke screen for Anthony Gordon and we can't get him in the coming days, I would like to see someone who can float like this all along the front line, but arguably play on that right hand slash cutting inside or play on that left hand side and allow Gakpo, Nunes or whoever to do a bit of their best work. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys think. Seemingly, I think it would be a great signing. I don't think it will happen. Because, not that I have any inside knowledge, but I just don't see it happening. I, I, the, my main reason being, why would Liverpool go out of their way to get him? I know they've got Mamadashvili, really great signing, talk about that more tomorrow. But the point is, I just don't see why we would be moving for him. Maybe it's timing, maybe it's all these kind of things. Maybe we thought we were gonna get Gordon and it felt hot, maybe it doesn't anymore. Maybe that tells us we're not gonna get Gordon in this time. Maybe it's that also Liverpool have floated this and Liverpool want Newcastle to know, well, we're not looking at your option, we're just gonna let him run down a contract. We're gonna take this guy, see what happens with him. And when we do get Gordon, because we know Gordon may wanna come in the end, then that's all good. You can just sit on him for a little while. Gordon, hang tight, we'll see you in a couple of years. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in a while. Much love. Bye.